Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers identification laws, obstruction, and leaving a crime scene, and is brought to us by Andre Rox's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, or lords and ladies in English. Established Titles allows you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so that you can don the esteemed title of lord or lady. With each purchase, Established Titles is committed to planting a tree and preserving the beautiful woodlands of Scotland. The primary goal of Established Titles is to provide provide a fun way to help preserve the picturesque woodlands and biodiversity of Scotland while raising funds to support global afforestation efforts. And each title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Ardally, Aberdeenshire, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Customers get a certificate proving the legitimacy of your title, as well as a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. And with the certificate, you could officially change your name to Lord or Lady, and display it on your credit card, plane tickets, and other their documents. Right now, established titles have their holiday sale live, and on top of that, they're offering members of the ATA community an extra 10% off with the discount code ATA. An official title would make a perfect gift this holiday season, so be sure to use code ATA or click on the link in the description below before it's too late. Thanks again to Established Titles for sponsoring this episode. On August 2nd, 2018, deputies with the Pasco County, Florida Sheriff's Office pulled over a vehicle in which Marcus Andre Johnson, who is professionally known as Andre rocks and is associated with the Wu-Tang Clan, was a passenger. His father was driving, and Mr. Johnson began to film the encounter once the officers approached the vehicle. He's coming to my door. How are we doing tonight? Doing Pretty well. How good? about yourself, Pretty sir? Good. You got your driver's license registration on you, sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. You got your ID on you too, sir? Um, I'm a passenger. I'm not required to identify myself. In the myself. state of Florida, you are? Um, that's national law, Fourth Amendment. In I'm the not state required. of Florida, you are? Sir, I'm a passenger. I'm not required to okay. identify myself to you. So, look. I, I you want to play my... that game? Okay, you can go ahead and get yours out. If you want to play that game, we can pull you out and I can take you to jail for resisting. Resisting arrest? You're going to yes, arrest sir. me for that? Yes, sir. Stop. So, Just in the state on. of Florida, you Come are required to me. identify yourself, even Just as a passenger. Listen, man, we're not somebody who likes to write tickets. Honestly, we ID you. We told, tell you about what's going on. We kind of pretty much just get you on your way. Okay. But, you got to ID yourself, man. I'm not required to identify myself. Do you? In the state of Florida, yes, you are, brother. The officer asserts that in the state of Florida, passengers are required to identify themselves. However, Florida's Stop and Identify Law, which is found in Section 901.151 of the Florida Statutes, only allows officers to identify individuals, quote, under circumstances which reasonably indicate that such person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a violation of the criminal laws of this state or the criminal ordinances of any municipality or county. And while Section 322.15 of the Florida Statutes requires drivers to present their license on demand, there is no similar obligation for passengers. In the 1979 case of Brown v. Texas, the Supreme Court overturned a conviction against an individual who refused to identify himself to police, concluding that, quote, to detain appellant and require him to identify himself violated the Fourth Amendment because the officers lacked any reasonable suspicion to believe appellant was engaged or had engaged in criminal conduct. Accordingly, appellant may not be punished for refusing to identify himself. When it comes to traffic stops, the Supreme Court also held in the 2015 case of Rodriguez v. United States that, quote, a police stop exceeding the time needed to handle the matter for which the stop was made violates the Constitution's shield against unreasonable seizures. A seizure justified only by a police-observed traffic violation, therefore, becomes unlawful if it is prolonged beyond the time reasonably required to complete the mission of issuing a ticket for the violation. The court further detailed law enforcement's, quote-unquote, mission during a traffic stop, stating that, quote, beyond determining whether to issue a traffic ticket, an officer's mission includes ordinary inquiries incident to the traffic stop. Typically, such inquiries involve checking the driver's license, determining whether there are outstanding warrants against the driver, and inspecting the automobile's registration and proof of insurance. Based in part on these cases, in the 2019 case of United States versus Landeros, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals held that because, quote, a demand for a passenger's identification is not part of the mission of a traffic stop, and that the identity of a passenger ordinarily has no relation to a driver's safe operation of a vehicle, a traffic stop may be extended to identify a passenger only if the officers have reasonable suspicion of an independent offense committed by the passenger. Given this precedent, 
precedent, a court would likely conclude that Mr. Johnson could not be charged criminally for refusing to identify himself in this situation. Listen, my man, you can tell us who he is. We can do it from there. That's my well. son. Okay, what's his name? Marcus Johnson. What's that? Dad. Mark. Come on. Like, come on, now, I don't want to go to jail tonight. I don't need this. Listen, it's just there's such thing as the Fourth Amendment. Marcus. I'm sorry. Thank you. Here's my license, my registration, it, my insurance. Thank you. Where are you guys heading tonight? Um, I just moved here last week okay. to 7410 Westwood. Right. Um, Sorry to hear that. <laughs> okay. Um, he just, he was here helping me. He found a motorcycle for cheap. It wasn't working, so I put it on a tow dolly that I had. And I live right down the street here. I just moved in. Okay. So, I'm going to hand this to Deputy Dunn. Okay. All I'm going to say is take a minute, talk to your son. Honest to God, it's really going to be fairly easy for you, okay? Yeah. Deputy Dunn does not write citations. It's not something yeah. I do either. Okay. We kind of like to tell people about it. That, it's kind of like a corrective thing. Up, so. You know what I mean? Okay. But when it gets escalated to this, he doesn't want to identify himself from there. He's interfering with an investigation, things like that. You can be taken to jail for that. One of the Pasco County deputies states that Mr. Johnson can be taken to jail for interfering with an investigation if he refuses to identify himself. If an individual is truly interfering with a police investigation, they can be charged with resisting an officer in violation of Section 843.02 of the Florida Statutes, which states that an individual who resists, obstructs, or opposes an officer, quote, in the lawful execution of any legal duty without offering or doing violence to the person person of the officer shall be guilty of a misdemeanor of the first degree. In some situations, refusing to identify can be the basis for a resisting an officer without violence charge. For example, in the 1998 case of KAC v. State, the 3rd District Court of Appeal of Florida found that a juvenile violated this statute when he refused to provide his name to an officer who suspected him of truancy. Notably, the court emphasized that the juvenile, quote, was under a legal obligation to answer the officer's questions, when concluding that the trial court properly found that he had committed the offense of resisting an officer without violence by not answering the officer's questions. However, when an individual is not legally required to identify themselves, they cannot be charged with resisting for refusing to do so. As the Second District Court of Appeal of Florida explained in the 1998 case of Burks v. State, quote, an individual may properly refuse to give his name or otherwise identify himself to law enforcement when he has not been lawfully arrested and prior to a lawful arrest. However, after a lawful arrest, an individual is compelled to provide his identity. Similarly, in the 1993 case of J.R. v. State, the 5th District Court of Appeal of Florida overturned a finding that a juvenile committed the offense of resisting an officer without violence by refusing to give his name to the police prior to being arrested because, quote, a defendant's failure to cooperate with the police by refusing to answer questions or identify himself by name cannot itself be criminal conduct, consistent with Fourth and Fifth Amendment protections. Therefore, a court would likely determine that Mr. Johnson could not be charged with resisting an officer for simply refusing to identify himself under these circumstances. That's and I don't want to do that. I don't want That's to fine. Do Let that. me give you my attorney's card. I'm I'm re can can I get my attorney's card for you? Literally I'm going to give you my attorney's card my and you feel free to give him a call. I'm not going to call him. Okay. I have no need Would to call him. Call it? I like it. You That's in the military? Well. I, I'm retired. So are you in the military? How you doing? And I would also like all of your cards and badge numbers. Sir. Okay. Sir? Yes. So the reason I pulled you over, I didn't get a chance to tell you. Okay. Your license plate in the back is folded up, so it's concealing oh. part of it. Okay. It and was... all, all your lights are all messed up, too, man. Yeah, that motorcycle kind of crunched everything. Okay. And we're just going a few blocks. Did he, did he ID him? He was starting to give me a name. Yeah, I think Um... All of your names and badge numbers, please. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Huh? Excuse me, sir. Can you just shut the car off for oh. me, please? Thank you very much. <coughs> Have we done anything wrong, sir? No. Okay. I'm a passenger, which means I'm not the subject of the investigation. He was operating the motor vehicle, which means that, honestly, legally speaking, I'm free to walk away if I'd like to.
Mr. Johnson claims that because he is not the subject of the investigation, he could technically walk away from the scene at any time. Generally speaking, there is some truth to this statement. For instance, in the 1983 case of Florida versus Royer, the Supreme Court explained that, quote, law enforcement officers do not violate the Fourth Amendment by merely approaching an individual on the street or in another public place, by asking him if he is willing to answer some questions, by putting questions to him if the person is willing to listen, or by offering in evidence in a criminal prosecution his voluntary answers to such questions. The person approached, however, need not answer any question put to him. Indeed, he may decline to listen to the questions at all and may go on his way. He may not be detained even momentarily without reasonable objective grounds for doing so, and his refusal to listen or answer does not, without more, furnish those grounds. However, courts have found that because of the complicated dynamic of traffic stops, officers may reasonably detain passengers during the course of a traffic stop, even if they are not the subject of the investigation. In the 2007 case of Brendlin v. California, the Supreme Court held that passengers as well as drivers were considered to be seized under the Fourth Amendment during a traffic stop. In reaching this conclusion, the court reasoned that, quote, a traffic stop necessarily curtails the travel a passenger has chosen, just as much as it halts the driver. An officer who orders one particular car to pull over acts with an implicit claim of right based on fault of some sort, and a sensible person would not expect a police officer to allow people to come and go freely from the physical focal point of an investigation into faulty behavior or wrongdoing. Based in substantial part on this opinion, the Florida Supreme Court held in the 2017 case of Presley v. State that, quote, as a matter of course, law enforcement officers may detain a vehicle's passengers for the reasonable duration of a traffic stop without violating the Fourth Amendment. Under this interpretation of the law, the officers would have been well within their authority to detain Mr. Johnson had he chosen to walk away. So, yeah, I'm sorry, but I know my rights. I am not the subject of the investigation. I was not operating a motor vehicle. I am not required to identify myself to you. That's not true. That's yeah. what okay, well, what can you quote me the law that tells me that I'm supposed to identify myself to you? Because the Fourth Amendment says that I have the right to be secure in my papers and my persons from unlawful... Here's what I, I think he was talking to a sergeant. Okay, not a problem. Again, I'm going to ask, can I have your name and badge number? Yes, sir. Your name and badge number? My name? Deputy Peeney, 4295. Thank you. And yours, sir? He's not. You don't have to worry about him. Is he uh, an officer of the law? Nope. Okay. Just if you want to explain that and see if he gets yeah. out. If not, okay. then... All right, guys. I'm going to be conducting an narcotic sniff on the exterior of the vehicle. All right, but in order to do that, you guys have to step out of the vehicle for me. All right. I'm not, I'm not asking you to. I'm telling you to at this point. Hey, what's up? Ramos, I didn't even notice there's somebody else in the back. Yeah, there is. That's what's my brother. Yeah, his? yeah, no, I saw him. We'll step out of the vehicle. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. They're conducting a narcotic sniff on the exterior of the vehicle. Can you put your hands on your back? Excuse me, am I under arrest? 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 Grab your phone for me. Am I under arrest? Let me just hold this, sir. After placing Mr. Johnson under arrest, the deputies searched the vehicle for drugs and did not find any. Mr. Johnson was taken to the Pasco County Jail and charged with resisting an officer without violence. The charge was dismissed by Judge Joseph Poblick over the prosecution's objections due to the legal precedent we have discussed in this episode. In 2020, Mr. Johnson filed a federal lawsuit against Pasco County Sheriff Chris Noko and Deputy James Dunn individually. The litigation is still pending. Overall, the Pasco County deputies get an F for displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of the Fourth Amendment, misrepresenting or misunderstanding Florida's identification laws, and for escalating a minor traffic infraction into an unlawful arrest. It is clear from the video that the Pasco deputies were either ill-informed regarding Florida's identification laws or blatantly misrepresenting them. At one point in the video, one of the deputies told Mr. Johnson that the other deputies were consulting with a sergeant, and it appears as though the deputies consulted with a supervisor before deciding to arrest Mr. Johnson. If the deputy was being truthful, then this suggests that the Pasco County Sheriff's Office may suffer from poor leadership. Although the deputies were not physically hostile or verbally abusive, their attitude and conduct was condescending and inflammatory, and the deputies made no effort to legitimately justify their actions to Mr. Johnson, or ensure that they were operating within the bounds of their authority. While it is true that the deputies would have been within their authority to arrest Mr. Johnson if he had attempted to leave the scene, that aspect of the encounter is essentially the only legitimate point that the deputies made, and their failure to consider 
considered the validity of Mr. Johnson's claims could result in a major settlement. The Pasco deputies failed to comprehend some of the most basic aspects of Florida law, and this interaction highlights the importance of understanding the fundamentals of policing as a member of law enforcement. Mr. Johnson gets an A-, minus because although he could have exercised his right to silence more tactfully, he remained calm and collected throughout the interaction, challenged the deputies' claims without becoming rude or vulgar, and demonstrated a relatively accurate understanding of the Fourth Amendment and identification laws in general. It is clear from the video that Mr. Johnson has some level of knowledge regarding civilian rights. And although he was mistaken about leaving a traffic stop, he accurately invoked his Fourth Amendment rights and did so in a respectable manner. At no point did Mr. Johnson physically resist the deputies, and he did an excellent job of maintaining a balance between invoking his rights and complying with the lawful demands of the deputies. I commend Mr. Johnson for standing up for his Fourth Amendment rights and for following up this interaction with the proper legal action. It'll be interesting to see how Mr. Johnson's civil case fares in the courtroom. Be sure to give Mr. Johnson's YouTube channel your support. You can find a link in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.